Everything we see, everything we touch, is made of matter. Every heartbeat, every breath, and every word we speak is made up of matter. But what is matter? What is that made up of? Let's examine the heart for a moment. From a distance, it's red and a little larger than an adult fist. But when we zoom in, we see an outline of muscle cells. If we zoom further in, we see the inside of the cells, the DNA inside the nucleus. And if we zoom in even further, we see clusters of atoms, the stuff that all matter is made up of. Atoms are the tiniest whole particles known to science. So tiny we can only see them in clusters. There are over a hundred types of atoms which we call elements. Each one of these elements is slightly different. Atoms are made up of subatomic particles. There are different kinds of subatomic particles. But for now, we're interested in just three. Electrons, protons and neutrons. Electrons have a negative charge. Protons have a positive charge. And neutrons have no charge at all. Different elements have different numbers of subatomic particles. Sodium has 11 electrons, 11 protons and 12 neutrons. The atomic number shows the number of electrons and protons in an atom that has a balanced state. This means sodium has an atomic number of 11. Chlorine has 17 electrons, 17 protons and 18 neutrons. Its atomic number is 17. In this basic form, neither sodium nor chlorine have a charge. They have the same number of positives as what they do negatives. But what would happen if the number of positives or negatives in an atom changed? Let's consider a sodium atom. See the larger circles in the middle? Those are protons. See the smaller circles on the outside? Those are electrons. It's very hard to know the exact sizes of these subatomic particles. We do know that a proton is almost 2,000 times as big as an electron. Protons are much heavier. A proton weighs around one atomic mass unit, or AMU. An electron weighs just 0.0005 AMU. In other words, it's a lot easier for an atom to lose an electron because it's lighter. It would be a little like brushing dust off the sleeve of your shirt. If a sodium atom loses an electron, its charge falls out of balance. It ends up with 10 negative charges and 11 positive charges. An atom carrying a charge is called an ion. Because sodium loses an electron, it becomes positive. It's called a positive ion. Or another word for it is a cation. A cation is a positive ion. Atoms can also gain electrons. Consider if chlorine gains one electron, then the atom has 18 electrons, but only the normal 17 protons. This results in a negative charge of one. 
An atom carrying a negative charge is called an anion. Many anions end in the suffix ide, ide. So chloride is a chlorine anion. People do often confuse cations and anions. An easy way to remember this difference between cations and anions is to think about cats and onions. Most people feel positive about petting a cat. Cations have a positive charge. Most people feel negative about an onion the smell, the taste, the vapour of an onion. So anions have a negative charge. Ions are very unstable. As with many things in nature, they seek stability. In order for an ion to become stable, its charges have to be brought into balance. This means that when a cation and an anion are close together, the conditions are favourable. They will join together to make a stable molecule. This pairing is called an ionic bond.